Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome. So in today's video, we're going to be having a Jamaican breakfast food mukbang. In today's video, as you guys saw by, by the title, we're going to be talking about a topic that I did not know was so, people were so passionate about. Like I literally, one of my vlogs, I talked about it for like two seconds and then in the comments, so many people were talking about it and I was just like, oh, I didn't know this was a big thing. So we're going to talk about it more in depth and like just about like Jamaica and cultural things in Jamaica and all that. So yeah, so basically this video was prompted by someone's comment that we're going to look at and talk about all that and that's why I have my laptop here. Now I have breakfast foods and I wish I had all my faves here but I try to buy, I tried to buy what I could this morning and I got lucky this morning. I'm going to tell you why soon. So I have my Catherine's Peak Water but this is what I have and it's almost done. <laughs> here Now I bought my food at Juicy Patty. Legit, usually... When I go there, food, like in the location I go, the food's always sold out. I got lucky today because I made sure I went extra early. But I got, let me, I hope you guys can see it. And I hope the camera's not blurring out anything. So I got plantain porridge. Oh my god, this smells so good. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. I hope you guys can see it. I never had plantain porridge ever since I was like seven, eight. I haven't had it in a long time. Like speaking of Jamaica, I'm thinking about hiring someone who can food prep for me. So if you guys know anyone who does like professional food prepping, let me know down below in the comments because I'm tired of cooking. I even like cooking to be honest. And food prepping would probably be much more easier with me because it's just very hard to like work, like do these videos and then having to cook, which is going to take a long time and then having to edit it and all that. But let me know. I should probably start learning how to cook and cook more often because it'll save me more money. But let me know if you guys know anyone who does Professional food prepping. Like I just want someone who can cook for me. I'll pay them and I have my food done for the week. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, so I went to Juicy Patty. Comment down below what your favorite breakfast food food spots are in Jamaica so I can check them out too. So I got fried dumpling, my fave ultimate breakfast food fave. So fried dumpling. I'm have Aki and Kalalu. I should actually go cut some hardo bread because I have hardo bread. I love hardo bread. Mmm, so good. I should probably cut some because I have some at the house here. I have some Kalalu, which you need your greens, and Aki. Now, the Aki looks weird because they're running out, and I was like so lucky. I was like the last person to order the Aki, and the lady was like, um, I told you to like the cashier, I told you like we only have one serving left. And like that was for the person ahead of me that ordered, and oh, they had a little bit, so I was like, my god, thank god. Because I would be so mad if I couldn't get any Aki to do this video. So cliche, like, oh my god, of course, Aki is selfish for Jamaican food. But I'm telling you, it was good. It's good. And then the next thing I got was, let me show you, is a fried dumpling again. Like, I had different options at Juicy Party, but I love fried dumpling. Like, it's my fave, so. And then I got liver. And this liver kind of looks, oh, I was like, it looks so dry. But I remember, like, in the bag, it's all the gravy spilt out. Now I remember where all that gravy was from. I'm sorry, I have to. Mm. So, <laughs> let me tell you guys where my favorite breakfast food spot is. My house. Any home cooked food is much better than buying it out on the road, even though it's good too. But anyways, let's start. Off, let's start into this topic. Mm. God bless Jamaican people mm. and the magic they create in this world. God bless Jamaican food. I'm telling you, Jamaican food is one of the best. Food out there. In total for all this, I spent $1,070 for this, for breakfast. And I'm gonna try and eat it. Anyways, when I was in Canada, I barely, like, in Canada, you can't get foods like this unless you, unless you make it yourself. Well, for me, because I lived in Durham, right? And we only have, like, Peppa Pot. That's, like, the only trusted Jamaican food place I'll eat from. Ooh, the rest of the places are just, ooh. But I think they have this actually for the breakfast menu, but I never went out there for the breakfast. Anyways, um, let's get into this. So, I hope you guys can see it. Hopefully it doesn't fall out. Over the seeds. Let me turn it to the side. Oh, I didn't try none of this. So let's, let's, the plantain. Oh my God, have you guys had plantain um, flittas before? My God, it's so good. I would actually have that for breakfast here too. I'll have frankfurters, okay, hardo bread. Um, flittas, but it has to be like the, the, the plantain one, so good. Banana flittas, so good. For breakfast. I wouldn't have like selfish flittas for breakfast. People do. Not my thing. Mm. So someone named no one but me, Smiley, said, Afrobeat is basically dance song. 
Okay, so Afrobeat is basically dancehall. All they did was to take the beat and change its name, which pisses me off. Jamaica gets no recognition. Recognition? What? Jamaica gets no recognition for this, and it always has been this way. Just like what they call twerking. Speaking of twerking, we're gonna go into that after. And then someone else responded. It was like. It's not the same thing, which I agree because these Afrobeat artists do not sound like dancehall artists. The reason why she's saying it's the same is because of the, the rhythms, like the beats, the instrumentals, and like the way like some of these African artists are trying to talk. Patois, <laughs> and it's not cutting it. But anyways, so the person who responded said, it's not the same. Some songs sound like dancehall. You know dancehall artists use their beats also. Well, I don't know about that. Oh, I think they're talking about Ding Dong. Remember everything come from Africa. Some of Wizkid, Tiwa Savage, even Yemi Alidade borrow from Jamaican culture, which we know this. We're the same people, so what difference does it make? Ooh, and the person was like, basically, what the F does this have to do with Africa? Jamaican and Caribbean music doesn't come from Africa. <laughs> Our music was created from people of African origin. Yes, but the music isn't African. Why? Because it wasn't brought over by slaves, so therefore it was a new creation. Okay, I think we're at a point now that people are just annoyed of people saying like, we're all African, we all come from Africa. Anyways, what's the difference? We're all black. There's a huge difference. And I hate when people do that. I understand where both of them are coming from, but I under... I agree with the person who says um no one but me smiling she made some valid points you guys can definitely go read that comment on another video i'm going to link mm, so good where do i start <laughs> afrobeat is basically dancehall no it's not <laughs> let's be real if you're a true dancehall fan you know this it's not true okay so the first time i heard about um a i listened to afrobeats i was like i was like yo i like this i like the rhythms Oh my god, there's a bee. Okay, this is when I was a photographer and I had to go photo photograph an engagement and they were African and they were playing this and I had to ask the man. I was like the fiance, I was like, oh my gosh, what like what genre of music is this? This reminds me of dance hall. Like this is I like the beats, I like the rhythms, right? And he was like, Oh, it's called Afrobeats. And I was like, wow, like this is banging. <laughs> the food's banging. No, I was like, no, like I like this music. Because like, and it just gave you that like dancing vibe. As soon as you hear it, you just have to start dancing because of how it is. Like, like I'm not a big Afrobeats fan because I don't even know any of the artists or anything. God, there's bees decide to come today. Mm. Part is so good. You guys have to agree. They have some nice songs that make you want to dance, and they play it here in Jamaica. Like. At some parties, you'll hear like the one, two, one, two different like Afrobeat songs. Mm. Mm. So, Afrobeat isn't dancehall because you can tell Afrobeat artists are inspired by dancehall music because of the like their beats, how it's made. You can tell it's obviously inspired by dancehall. Not only that, um, <laughs> the way some of these like African based artists are trying to speak, they're trying to like talk like how Jamaicans, <laughs> Jamaican people talk. And like they're trying to chat patois in their songs, which, and then it sounds weird. It's like they're saying like, I don't know, they're just words that sound weird that it's just like a whole thing. But anyways, let me know what you guys think down below. <laughs> Jamaican people, like it's a compliment. Like there's a whole entire like group of people out there, a whole genre out there that's influenced by dancehall, that they wanted to make their own and they want to sound like dancehall artists but have their own like African twist to it. All that, which is sick, but the girl's like, just like hey, it's always been this way, like other countries always take from Jamaica and Jamaica gets no credit, which is true because I think if you guys remember, and I was young during this time, when like, you know how Elephant Man used to come out and sing songs about like the new dances that are in Jamaica that the dancers then will come up with and stuff like that? And Elephant Man was like one of those dancehall artists that took dancehall to like the Western world. We see that when we were growing up, I think it was like Sierra or like Chris Brown or someone, I, th I forget who it was, it was one of those like artists that like they came out with like a new dance move and like Jamaican people were like ah uh, I swear that's Nalinga <laughs> I forget what you guys comment down below if you guys know exactly what I'm talking about but it was like a big thing like everyone was just like okay but like they come out with like these dance moves that are inspired by like that Jamaican dancers and dance hall and like Jamaica still doesn't get no recognition like American just like put it into their version the same thing with twerking when twerking first came out and it was like a big huge thing like, like oh my god twerking 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 
Jamaican people are like, um, we've been doing that. <laughs> well, this is something that's not new, as the person clearly indicates, and we all know this. We see this with a lot of American choreographers, professional dancers, like, if you like follow a lot of them or watch a lot of them, they get a lot of their dance moves from Jamaican dancers. And like a lot of um, Beyonce's like choreographers or like where she gets her dance moves them, a lot of them are influenced by a lot of Jamaican based like dancers and dance moves. Like we all know this. And this is with a lot of celebrities like. This is so good. American like singers, they get like, they look towards like reggae and dance hall. And this is not anything new for like inspo. I remember there was like this whole like dance hall reggae wave with like um, Justin Bieber with his songs. This beat is so annoying. Um, like Justin Bieber, he came out with that sorry song, which is nice. It's a nice song. We can obviously tell it's inspired by reggae dance hall. Say we see it with Rihanna. Um, like she does like a lot of like Jamaican based things. That song she came out with. Drake, what is it called? Why did I forget the name? Anyways, you guys know what song I'm talking about. And then in the music video, it's all like red, gold, and green. And they're at like a dance hall party. And like people are winding up on each other. And non-Jamaicans are going to say it's a Caribbean thing. And we Jamaican people know it's a Jamaican thing. It's a Jamaican thing. And I feel like Jamaica needs to be more strict with their cultural things, their cultural identity. And don't make people who are not Jamaican just profit off Jamaican-based things. So. When we talk about like Jamaican music, so basically dancehall and reggae music, Jamaican cultural symbols, and just overall Jamaican cultural identity things, they need to be more strict and like be like, hey, like no, you can't be doing that because even like um, Nicki Minaj, she's like from Trinidad, she's not even Jamaican, she tries to speak like Patois in her songs, but she's nothing's wrong with it actually because obviously she clearly likes Patois more and she knows she'll get more recognition if she spoke Patois more than um, what Trini people speak I don't even know what they speak to be honest but yeah so what I'm saying that non Jamaican people are gonna say it's a Caribbean thing it's not everyone knows that Jamaican Jamaica and Jamaican culture is very distinct out of the whole entire Caribbean like we have so many things that are so different and separate I can't relate to different islands I'm gonna be honest let me know if you're down below as a Jamaican can you relate to other islands I can't I always say, oh, that's a Jamaican thing, or it's not. I don't say that's a Caribbean thing. I'm going through green is not a Caribbean thing. That's a Jamaican thing. Let's be real. Let's be honest. That's Caribbean music. There's no such thing as Caribbean music. It's either it's dancehall, reggae, reggaeton, soca, um, calypso. I am hot. <laughs> oh, I'm so hot. I'm just being honest about the topic. And we say the same thing with like cultural pieces. We see like Tommy Hilfiger, he he had a whole line. I think it was like in 2018 or 2017, he had a whole line where it was like all reggae based, like red, gold, and green attire, like Jamaican based, like things. And I think they did a fashion show down here. I cannot remember if they did the fashion show in Jamaica. And what did Jamaica get from it? Nothing. Let me get, let, let me know down below if they should hire me. We need to make Jamaican things more regulated and take a stand. And be like other countries like China and stuff where people can't just take cultural things and profit off it, especially if you're not Jamaican, bye. Like you know dancing is a really big thing with dancehall music, regular music, just Jamaican culture. And like non, <laughs> non Jamaican people that come from Europe, they'll come down here, learn all the new dance moves, all the dance, because you guys know Jamaican people are nice and friendly and they're willing to teach you dance moves and teach you this and that, how to move your body, how to wine to rhythms and wine to the beat and stuff like that european girls these non-black let me emphasize on that non-black european girls they come here learn all the dance moves everything and go back to their country and open like a studio dancing studio and benefit so much money from it and they make like thousands of dollars they travel all over europe to like canada america they teach like dancing workshops and i don't know it's a whole thing and then i'm just like oh and what are these dancers like these recognized amazing dancers in jamaica get nothing I can't fill up my belly on all this water. They get nothing. So we see this, and I'm ta I'm talking about that for way too long, but this is something that I've seen. The color tastes weird, and the octa doesn't even taste that good. Oh, when it comes to Juicy Pies, sometimes they offer like um, stew chicken uh, for breakfast, and I don't know why you guys are eating that for breakfast. That is way too heavy to eat. I know just a lot of people eat that with like boiled dumpling and boiled banana and stuff like that. That's just way too heavy and it just makes me want to vomit thinking about that. I didn't know it was a thing that people have corn pork, like corn pork and 
Aki. <laughs> that just sounds like really fattening. Like it sounds like I'll be fat if I eat that. Yeah, so it was a big thing. A lot of people was ordering that. I don't know. All the dancehall and reggae artists I know are Jamaican. There's like supposedly African dancehall artists, which I don't know about. And I'm, if you know who my favorite dancehall artist is, comment it down below. And you'll be my best friend. I promise you. I don't really have an opinion on this topic. Well, I do, obviously, I just shared it. I don't really too, too care. The one thing you're not gonna say is the Afrobeats and dancehall is the same, and that dancehall copies from Afrobeats. Like, we're just not gonna do, say that, and we're not gonna do that, because we know who are the originators, and we know where it authentically comes from. And you just can't. You can't see a genre that was inspired from dancehall music that is using like patois and like trying to have the same lingo as Jamaican people and say that Jamaican people, like we're just not gonna do that. Especially if you're very educated on this, you wouldn't say that. That makes no sense at all. Again, comment down below. Give me some like good Afrobeat um, songs and good Afrobeat artists I should listen to because their music is banging, okay? And comment down below and let me know what you guys think about this whole dancehall versus Afrobeats. You guys educate people in the comments just like how no one but Smiley. This person knows their dancehall and they know. I just love it. <laughs> I stand those type of people. Yeah, I would give this food like a 5 out of 10. I think it's because it's cold. But these are my favorite. I love this. This. Yeah, because like Jamaican people and Jamaicans, they have so much power because they're just a creative set of people. Jamaican people are a creative, inspirational set of people on this planet that a lot of people borrow and take from them. And I just feel like people need, I feel like Jamaica needs to start, just make it more regulated and just be like, start saying no. Like make like a whole entire like business from Jamaican culture in their country. Yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. I have like so much food left. I'm just going to give it to my dogs and kitty cats. Yeah, that's it for my mukbang, my Jamaican breakfast mukbang. Again, comment down below what your guys' favorite breakfast foods are that are Jamaican-based, of course. And they gave me a whole spoon for the porridge, and I'm drinking it. I don't know, I always drink porridge. Especially when porridge comes in these cups, I just, it just like reflex to just drink it like it's tea or something. Yeah, let me know your what your favorite breakfast foods are in Jamaica. Jamaican-based breakfast foods. What your favorite spots are to eat, have breakfast. And let me know your thoughts on Afrobeats and dance, Afrobeats music, dance home music. And you guys, make sure you guys leave me some good, 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 good Afrobeat songs and artists I can look and listen to because I heard a song the other day and I was like dancing, but I don't know who it was from and what they were saying, but it was a vibe. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so that's it for today's video. I hope you guys like it. And let me know, like with this video, comment down below if you guys want more of these Jamaican-based, like Jamaican food-based mukbangs. I'll definitely give that to you guys. Oh yeah, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Au revoir. Bye. But here's some more videos if you want to watch.